Hello everyone, this is the Pirate Roller Coaster, a set a lot of LEGO fans have been looking forward to for quite some time. It is a creator three-in-one set, meaning there are three official build options. You can choose from any one of those options and instructions are included in the set, but you can only build one option at a time with the parts from one single set. I'm going to show you each of those in this one video, but I'm going to start with this, the main build that actually uses all of the pieces and is by far the largest. Let's take a tour around the entire ride, starting from the beginning. This is intended to be the entrance and exit way for the ride, and it also has the ticket booth down there. It's designed to look like an imperial fort from the classic LEGO pirate themes, and it's built up pretty well. So many of the pieces of the set go into just this one corner, and it has a good amount of detail, and it, it really is set up such that if you just added a couple more walls, you could use this as a pirate set just by itself. I mean, they even have a cannon off here on, on the side, and you can pull that up. And it has wheels on it, so you can wheel it around, you can change the angle, and it's even able to fire things off. They give you the little water pieces, what the, these are supposed to represent there. You can put one in there, just pull this back, and it's spring-loaded. It's a standard cannon piece, and that just fires right off pretty quickly but you know this is this is a whole thing they've got ladder access up to the upper level there where the controls would be if you want to put a person in there to control the the speed of the ride and to get it going or if you want to ignore those controls and again just look at this as being part of a pirate themed attraction or or even you know separating it from the coaster if you get bored of the coaster action itself i mean they've got space to put a figure up on the top this can represent a prison cell there and somebody can be placed in there you can even put two figures in there you got a little bit of space on the balcony but you know this is where the, the coaster train really comes by and where people are supposed to queue up and then get into the cars one by one from this side you know they've got the turnstile over here and you know it, it's just set up nicely to have figures placed in different parts of it all around you've got the uh, the staircase that comes up here, there's enough space for some queuing here where a line of people could come up here and then also be posed going into the ride. So I like how large that is. I like some of the smaller details, like this is supposed to represent a toucan and it's actually, you know, a brick build. Got a, uh, a root beer or a sparkling cider bottle <laughs> back there. Brick built little uh, little palm tree there off to the side and they have a camera for taking pictures of folks as they come back on the ride just nicely detailed and nicely built up but now let's go ahead and move along with the ride itself so this is using the new standard roller coaster track system all the tracks in this set are in the light blue uh, bluish gray excuse me light bluish gray color which i think is the the most generic and probably the most useful for a lot of folks especially doing custom stuff this is your initial rise here and immediately you can see that the the coaster train and the cars uh, are all set up to to look like a long kind of snaking uh, shark so the coaster coaster car bases themselves are in sand blue you can move this tail up and down if you want but you know this is the rise they don't give you any sort of mechanism to pull it up so you just have to get your hand in there they've got the skull crossing there that acts as kind of a, a gate and people have to go through that I don't like the fact that it hits the minifigures in the head but I do like the fact that it provides a little bit of resistance well that didn't work out there but if you have this just at the top provides just a little bit of resistance let me put it right oh i thought it did there we go right there to be able to hold on to the thing so if you want to just keep it in in place for a minute uh you know that kind of just helps with that a little bit there's a piece of an octopus under here which only has three legs that just wrap around the ride a little bit and you can see a little bit of detail around the base as well this is intended to represent kind of under the sea here so this is all sea bed and it looks flimsy it looks like it's not built up very well but it's actually uh, very very possible to move this around without worrying about it falling apart it's much better to move around much easier to move around than the larger creator expert roller coaster was some small details down at the base and as people go around the side here they're supposed to look out the edge look out the side of the ride and 
look down and see that you know there's some buried treasure under there there's a skeleton down there there's somebody who was trying to get at the treasure and then you go past this small brick built shipwreck you know pirate ship uh, build there actually might not even be representing yeah i think that's supposed to be a, a pirate ship in this case because of the the red and and white and again, nicely built up. It's not intended to be moved around or really played with, but there's probably more detail there than there needs to be, in my opinion. Uh, very good uh, geometry in here and Lego math was used to put everything at angles that are all legal where everything just holds itself in place really well. So that's, that's actually pretty cool. Uh, you can't really build a proper ship from that if you wanted to to do that as a, a separate kind of sub project and then the whole thing just comes around the edge starts to go down you get a little bit more seabed uh, detail not a lot i will show you the balloon cart by itself in a minute but there is one action feature that works just on its own to give you a water spray as the the coaster comes by here and it just has a very simple trigger mechanism so i'll just push this by it didn't really work that well there it just has a little bit of kind of a trigger that sticks up let me put this through again and you'll start to see how the ride really works you do need to give this a little bit of a of a push from the top otherwise it'll just get stuck over on the side i'll give you better angles there we go now the the water spray came up so this is just either up or down it has a little counterbalance there and it's supposed to come up to represent splashing let me show you a little bit better how this really goes so again, you have to push the coaster train up the main lift hill. And once it gets to the top, you do need to give it a little bit of a boost and give it some initial speed. And there it goes, it just comes right back to the base of the hill. It doesn't really stop at the stop. You'd have to do some, some custom small mechanism to give it a little friction, a little resistance right there. But again, if you just bring it up to the top, have it hold there for a minute, where you know you just want to kind of leave it with the the skull kind of holding it in place if you just give it a little tap it'll only barely go around the corner there so you do need to give it a little bit of a boost i like how it looks when it comes down this part that's very it's just very smooth and just feels right to me but i am a little bit disappointed by the the physics how you do need see i gave it a little bit of push but it wasn't quite enough i wish that that was just a little bit better that uh there we go i didn't have to give it quite so much of a, of a push but that's how you play with the thing you know you just go around and uh, one of the things that you do is have different people coming in and out at different times i very strongly recommend customizing this thing and playing kind of around it kind of use more of the space down around the base and a lot of the details to represent park attractions you know that the minifigures can look at and enjoy and certainly this outpost down here there's just so much built here that uh, maybe there will be some times when the coaster ride proper is closed and kids can just play with this as a big old pirate kind of clubhouse here's a better look at that balloon cart it's pretty simple but at least it's a very honest build it doesn't have any kind of cheat techniques doesn't use any large specialized molds or anything so in that sense it's enjoyable to put this together it has two balloons and then two tanks to blow them up and that's just that here are a couple of the minifigures with the pirate on the left he could be the guy working the ticket booth or you could put him actually onto the coaster you could put him out into the ride to add a little extra color and intrigue and interest so he can be locked up in the uh, in the jail cell in in the fort or he could just be operating the riot or something and the kid has a dark green cap with the the small mini pig hole on the top so if you have some extra uh, mini fig accessories with the with the mini pig you can put that in there such as the uh, headphones or some of the friends uh, figure accessories and then here are just a couple of normal, plain clothed adult minifigures. And you can have both of these be the parents of the kid, or one of them can be a parent and the other can be an employee or just another random person. Like, you know, you can set them up to be whatever you want them to be. And unlike the kid and the pirate, each of these has an alternate face. That's always good to see. I also appreciate 
the fairly generic prints overall, so these can be reused for other things. Here's one of the alternate builds. Lego calls this the ship ride, and it also has you building at the same time a couple of larger side builds. I'll show you those up close in a moment. But, you know, this is one of those rides where you get in the ship and you just kind of go back and forth. They have a little bit of a locking mechanism on this one that works much better for, for the idle time than the one that they did on the the actual coaster. See, that'll actually hold the thing in place, and then when you're ready to go, you just pull this out, and it goes back and forth a handful of times. It has more action, more kind of hands-off action than the main coaster, actually, but uh, it's not that exciting. It's, it's kind of straightforward in how it works, but how it's built is pretty clever. I mean, obviously, they're using just the the coaster bases again and you can put a figure in the the center one as well but what i like here is how they've angled these upper tracks so these two track segments here are not actually connected they're just placed very near each other and at compatible angles it's all just about the angle and again they're using some pretty clever and proper Lego math, getting everything aligned just as it needs to be. And it's a smooth transition between those track segments. I mean, it's really just where it needs to be. It doesn't feel like there's any bump in the road right there. So that's a, a good alternate use of, of these roller coaster pieces to put them together in ways that may not have been obvious at first, and it proves that you can do that for custom builds, you know, to put things together uh, not just in the most traditional ways. It'll be interesting to see other things and other shapes that can be built using techniques like that. This is a fairly Spartan build. You know, they try to bulk it up a little bit with these rock features here, again, going with the underwater theme, and then they have the archway in the back made with a couple of roller coaster pieces, just like the, the setup that they had for the start finish line, I believe it was in the most recent large Ferrari uh, Speed Champion set, it uses that exact same design. And yeah, I think it looks pretty good and it works well for what it is. But uh, to get the, the most fun out of it, I think you want to just pick up the whole thing and just kind of rock it back and forth. And you can really get the entire coaster train to go all the way up to the very top and you kind of feel the weight going back and forth. There's something a little bit more fun, I think, about holding this and doing this than it appears, but you know, it will get old fairly quickly, I do think. In case anyone is interested, here's how it looks from around the back. But I don't I don't think there's anything else particularly interesting to see here, so let me move on. This side build to the ship ride is a ticket booth, and I think it's great. I think this is done pretty perfectly. It doesn't look like it's made of just random pieces. I think the colors go together pretty well. It has a good level of detail for its size, and it does have kind of the balloon cart function built into it. And you have right now one balloon that's being inflated. I think they were just trying to give you an idea of how to set up things to to look like they are in progress. Uh, I think the other um, the other string piece or string equivalent piece is still available. I'm just looking around. No, it is not. It's actually used uh, on the flag for the ship ride. But you could always just leave that flag off and then have both of the balloons be on uh, on kind of faux strings. And then this is just a kind of a general theme park or uh, or amusement park or carnival game. Uh, just a little area, just a kiosk that has a bunch of things that you, you can play on it. So they've got, obviously, basketball set up there. These are supposed to represent cups that you can use for stacking. doesn't work all that well in, in Lego, just in the, the normal sense. But you could also uh, line them up and imagine throwing things at them. So it could be one of those, you know, knock things down to win the prize sort of little little booths. This is supposed to be the awning here on the front. Or you could also see it as just a very small uh, food and or beverage little, uh, little vendor. You know, you just put a person behind there and they can just serve up some pirate themed drinks or something. You could also see this as just being a table where people can come and hang out, you know, when they need a little bit of rest. And there's a slightly different build for a bird up on top. Just a whole lot of things in one. Uh, this is supposed to be, I don't know, 
trash can. I don't know why somebody put a sword in a trash can, but you know, set things up however you want. This just offers a lot of possibilities with a very small build. I forgot to show you this also at first. This is another small build off to the side, just a cannon on wheels. That That's really all it is. You know, they have those parts, so there's no point in leaving them out of any of the official builds. And then there's this thing, the skull ride, they call it, with, once again, two side builds. One of them is pretty nice, the largest of the side builds they offer officially. And once again, I will show you those separately, but you kind of see what this is and how it's set up the entire thing is intended to tilt from side to side and then it just goes around connected with this arm and it's supposed to be you know a skull and then a skeleton arm coming out here another skeleton arm coming out here and the counterweight is kind of done up to look like a bit of a hand so it has some articulating digits that you can kind of you know just pose up a little bit but this is supposed to actually work without you putting your hands on the ride uh, or on, on the minifig section of it at least. I did not really have good luck with that for a couple of reasons. First of all, uh, a couple of the pieces in here are supposed to be smooth, it's supposed to uh, just smoothly tilt back and forth. I guess it's doing okay right now, but uh, when I first did it, you saw that it kind of ratcheted a little bit, so it just had a little friction issue with some specific pieces. But also, I mean, I'm not able to really get into the rhythm of it as it's set up like this. There we go, and it ratcheted again. It's just not kind of, it's not getting going. There's too much friction at the base. It's just not working the way it's supposed to. The whole thing is hinged. It's supposed to go side to side, and you're supposed to just grab this and just get into the, the rhythm of it and then get it to, to just go. But it doesn't really tilt enough. So I personally recommend just leaving it horizontal and then tilt the entire thing because it's on a narrow base uh, probably not the best idea to build it this way if anything uh, have the the large bait kind of base plate here the 8 by 16 turned perpendicular to this so it gives you more stability but the fact that it's not done that way actually allows me to do this to pick the thing up and to get it going and you can get into the the rhythm of it I'm not doing it properly here but this is you know what you're supposed to do is kind of how the thing is intended to work and once you get the momentum right if you get the timing right then you'll get it to work there that actually did its little thing of, of shifting to the side which makes it not work yeah not the not the best not the best mechanism here it's not quite fun like this I think if you build it without the pivot in the center and just just do like this naturally just forget about what they intend for you to do it's going to work a lot better and uh, again be one of the things that you can really get going and, and continue to have it going for the sake of the the figures so you know they can have more fun you can have more continuous ongoing play you just saw me push the track down here uh, i i haven't had that uh, i haven't seen that as too much of an issue kind of playing around with this but it is one thing that you will occasionally encounter with these roller coaster tracks in general they they don't have good clutch power onto whatever they're connected to beneath but yeah i mean this is okay i love the idea for sure i think it looks very good again they have some underwater themed detailing in there that really didn't need to be there but it really adds i think a lot the skull face build is okay and we got a little gem in in one eye and it's supposed to have like barnacles around it and stuff it's all supposed to be under the water and yeah, i think it works well enough uh, looks a little bit better than it works, but uh, could have been better still with just uh, a little more range of motion, I think would have really, really saved this. Here's one of the side builds to the skull ride, and this one is set up to be a little bit more of a realistic either pirate defense or pirate outpost space on, a, on an island or on a beach, and they've got the cannon fully set up there, and ready to be fired off. Again, that's actually going to work. And then the much larger ticket booth here, which includes the stairs going up, have a couple of birds down by the shore as well. You've got the, the, uh, the skeleton off to the side. This is again, really nice looking. This one looks even better than the first ticket booth. And yeah, just a nice build, good use of the pieces. I think 
The, uh, the pirate there has a measuring stick that's intended to show how tall you need to be to get on a given, a given ride. Uh, I don't know if that's entirely accurate because the kid is allowed to go onto the ride. This one also has integrated into it a, a camera set up here. Let me get that at more of a proper angle. And I like even the sign up at the top. You know, it's kind of embellished a bit. Makes it look a little bit more interesting. The, you know, the ticket itself is a small piece and has a small print on it. But I think all the, the yellow around and the things that represent lights kind of help with this. This even has a brick built chair around the back for an operator to sit in there. So the person kind of works as a ticket booth operator and a ride operator simultaneously with the, the, the lever in there that they can pull. And you even have a little bit of cave space underneath if you want to use that for some exploration or have some hidden treasure down there as kind of a, a bonus thing to do after you're on the ride. But this is nice for what it is. In my opinion though, this is kind of not nice. These are the pieces that are left over from one of the rides. These are actually from uh, building the ship ride, the one that goes back and forth. That's a lot of pieces that are not used that could easily have been put into some additional side builds or something. It just feels wrong to have a full official build that leaves this much of the set behind so i very strongly recommend that uh, if you get this set and you don't build the main build <laughs> you're left with all these parts put these parts to use in some way try to expand your smaller rides or uh, just create some additional things off to the sides you can probably create some small attractions that are fully fully operational just by themselves i mean you have the train wheels here uh, for the, the cannon from the original build and stuff. I mean, there's just so much stuff here. This definitely needs to be used. It feels like a shame. So in terms of major takeaways and my overall thoughts about this set, first of all, I'm very glad that they made something like this, something that is significantly smaller and cheaper than the expert roller coaster set. And I think that the price to part ratio is very, very fair, at least in the US, especially considering how many actual track pieces this includes. I mean, those are relatively expensive to make and they have more value to Lego fans in general than a typical like a one by one brick piece or, or something. So, you know, to have, have, have a price to part ratio where it is, is very nice to see. But I have to say, and I'm sure you got this impression by now throughout the review, this thing is not as fun as I wanted it to be. To actually play with, um, you know, having to give it a real push from the top and then not having a lot of, of free fall space, not having a lot of, of, of run time. I know it's only going to be, you know, a couple seconds at most in something of this size, but, you know, you're, you're, you're really pushing it all the way back to this turn and then it's only going on its own around that turn down here and then around this corner so it feels like about half of the track in the main build has to be operated by hand you have to have your hand in there moving stuff around and that just doesn't feel good to me i out of a set like this if it's not gonna have a motor in it for obvious cost reasons i want to have just a section where I have to push it up to the top and then I want to let go and just step back and enjoy watching it go on its own for a little while. This ride does much better at that because it has just the little trigger at the top and then you push it and then, you know, the thing at least goes back a, a number of times and it starts to move, you know, small amounts towards the base, but these, these tracks are so smooth. They really work, work well. And this is set up for, for play. I think it, it looks pretty good and I feel like this is, kind of a, a better setup overall for the number of pieces it uses. <laughs> but then again, it does leave a lot of the pieces behind. So if this is your favorite build from this set, you're not getting a good value from this unless you do something custom of, of your own with the, the rest of the parts. This over here definitely does not work as well as it should. It needs some modification. Then I think it, it can be made to work uh, pretty decently well, actually, as, as I showed. You just need to give it more range of motion. Maybe, again, just leave out the whole 
pivot system entirely just lock that together this is really good here and this is a nice small little side build overall i'm not as impressed as i wanted to be i wanted to love this thing i don't love it i like a lot of things about it though and i think that it's again uh, a good value and a good start for making custom stuff to be honest those are just my thoughts though, my personal opinions. Feel free to share your own in the comments down below and I have many, many more sets to review for you. So I'll be talking to you again very soon.